Hello. My presentation was on the German um, philosopher and sociologist Jürgen Habermas. Jürgen Habermas um, believed in the ideal speech community and communicative action and discourse. Um, ideal speech community is when found when communication between individuals is governed by basic implied rules to basically regulate or critique concrete speech. Um, I would also like to add that Habermas believed in German Marxism, but felt that modern day education was too segregated and wanted to bring different philosophers together, different philosophies to philosophers. He is very into equality for all, and he makes sure that we are all on the same level. Um, Habermas believed that when there are two of, uh, opposing viewpoints instead of physical conflict, there should be a, like a try to resolve their differences through discourse and seek moral consensus. In a rational consensus, both sides were willing to agree on a compromise agreement that will bind all participants. He believed only a rational consensus can ground truth. So let me explain that a little bit more. So then there are the four presupp presuppositions of discourse. One, everyone needs to have a genuine discourse and aim at a rational consensus. Two, it had to be possible to attain a consensus. Three, be able to tell a true consensus from a false consensus. Four, only rational consensus can ground truth and bind all participants. Exactly. So when we, when we are reaching that general consensus, we can live with that rule that all can live with. So everyone comes to the table with different views until everyone agrees on a consensus that everyone can live with. So it's not over until that, that is what we are agreeing upon. And all conflict is resolved through integrated views and consensus that is agreed upon by everyone. Um, I would also like to add that he, if we were going to just re basically remember this philosopher, he just wants equality for all and everyone to be on the same level, which is socialist in a sense, um, which adheres to what he preaches. <laughs> that is all. Thank you. Hi, my name is Matt, and I got a couple more things to talk about. Um, for our philosopher, Jürgen Habermas. Um, Jürgen Habermas believed in something called the public sphere. And in this, he argued that prior to the 18th century in Europe, their culture was dominated by what he said was a representational culture. This means that whatever party, king, ruler, whatever was in power, um, would just try and represent themselves using propaganda as this almighty great and perfect entity instead of actually focusing on the citizens and, and their needs. He argued that after the 18th century with the rise of many newspapers and, uh, and other journals, this allowed, it, allowed for more dialogue and discourse in the public sphere. Um, this is due to you know more people, more normal citizens were finally being able to hear opposing views um, instead of just the same propaganda that they were receiving all the time. Um, he argued that this shift in, um, in the culture was the main proponent in uh, the French Revolution. Um, one other thing that um, Jürgen Habermas argued in his book Between Facts and Norms is that law is the primary medium of social integration in society. He also argues that law laws have no power. Um, laws do not have power to grant their own legitimacy, and that must come from the consent of the governed. So if the governed don't believe in a law, it, it has no legitimacy. That's pretty much all he is saying there.
All right, thank you. Hi, my name is Madison Gansis, and I did a lot of research on a philosopher known as Habermas. So Habermas, he, as I stated multiple times in class, um, believes in equality for all, but that is just the sum up nutshell that is Habermas. Um, in all reality, he mainly was known for his um, concept of cumulative action, which he developed in 1981. So this basically um, was to serve as a transmit and renew culture knowledge. So it was in the process of achieving mutual understandings. That is a really key word, mutual understandings. Um, it then coordinates action towards social interaction. So basically, um, we need to understand each other when we talk to each other, or in all reality, the whole nutshell, we will not be equal. So we need to understand by language, we need to understand by what we're meaning to say, and then we need um, to be valid with it. So basically, if I'm not understanding what you're saying to me and I take it the wrong way, then I can be treating you differently. It has been seen in multiple times in our lifetime where we don't understand what people are trying to tell us. And as in a lot of relationships, we see the phrase communication is key is very much true and Hobbin Ross thinks so too. And we need communication to be equal, but there's a lot that goes in communication to understand each other. And we need to understand our different cultures our, and different people. So the language barrier, as what I've learned in my diversity and teaching class, is actually really difficult um, and it's made us divided because we don't understand each other because we can't understand their language and um, we assume things and that makes us unequal. Um, also as in text, with technology nowadays, that is the main thing. We don't know how someone is talking to us when by a text, an email, or even on social media. You don't know what people really mean by what they're saying. It could be a joke, it could be like without a certain like punctuation mark, it the whole sentence and meaning changes. So it, it makes us treat each other differently if we aren't mutually understanding what we are trying to say to each other. And I think that's what Hopper Moss was trying to get at is that our world will be divided until we have that mutual understanding. And that is the theory of cumulative action.